I bet it's, it's got to be. All about. right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Tuesday, January 18th Board of Selectmen's meeting. We'll get started with the Pledge of Allegiance. Allie, can you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Sorry, we're just having one little technical difficulty, but we'll go into. Do we have anyone here for citizens' input? <laughs> no, Jeff. I saw you near the sheet. You're not. No citizens' input. Okay. All right. So we have a pretty full agenda, um, but to lead us off this evening, we have Allie. It's always a pleasure to have Allie in. Um, I think as long as you have a speaker, a microphone in front of you, wherever you're more comfortable is good. Here's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Paul. Do you want to, Bill, could she have the Yeah, does she need the, need the clicker or? Yeah, please. There you go. Just watch me in case I get any hand signals from the back. Yeah. Which one is? Uh, I think you just push the, the right cir yep. circle to the right or okay. to the left. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fox score, veteran services. Hey, there we go. <clears throat> this is me, Ali Rodriguez. I'm a United States Army veteran. I did hire a new assistant, Lauren Burrell. I, um, her from the town of Middlebury. doing the there. My, uh, our admin position, our admin position became available, and she applied. Services. This is what my uh, my office provides. Everything from benefit information and the guidebook that the VA uh, distributes every year, to bonuses for Massachusetts uh, veterans who deployed overseas. They get a bonus. $500 just for being enlisted, and then 1000 if you have an overseas deployment. Discharge paperwork, when veterans need a copy of their DD-214, I help acquire that, provide flags, and probably dispose of retired flags. So a lot of the citizens will come into town and say, hey, you know, this flag is dirty or it's tattered. How do I get rid of it? Just leave it to me. I give it to the Boy Scouts who then properly retire flags. <laughs> grave markers, if an eligible veteran has deceased, they are entitled to a grave marker. I help fill that out. Um, we decide if it's either bronze or marble, what the inscription should say, and then we deliver it to Rock Hill Cemetery and they install it. Other services, memorial squares, so we do help upkeep with the memorial squares around town. Veterans Grave, um, my office does provide upkeep for that. Uh, wartime deployment bonuses, widow benefits, so if a veteran dies of a service-connected disability, the widow does get um, entitlement. Unfortunately, it's not automatic. It's a very long and strenuous process. I help with that. Tons of, uh, transportation, a lot of, so transportation is an issue statewide. Um, and if a veteran needs transportation to either a VA, VA appointment or medical appointment, I'll coordinate with local nonprofits and help them get to their appointments. So this is roughly just VA claims. This is not 115, this is just veterans claims. In 2021, I filed 100 service-connected disability claims. 25 were out of state, and that means Maine, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and New Hampshire. Um, Massachusetts is the only state in the union that has a VSO representing every town. Every other state is by county, so you have one veteran or one VSO trying to help hundreds of veterans. And oftentimes, they, the veteran doesn't even get a call back. So they come to me and um, we help file claims because a VSO doesn't have to be specific to that certain state or town. 15 um, VA burial claims, five education claims, three welcome home bonuses, six annuity applications. So in Massachusetts, this is also specific just to Mass. If a veteran is a 100% service-connected disability, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts will pay you $2,000 in February and in August just for being 100%. Only Massachusetts does that. And then five death indemnity claims. Again, DIC claims is if a veteran died of a service-connected disability. It's otherwise known as survivor's pension. Nope. Year review. So we did um, some, did I miss some stuff? I did. Sorry, guys. OK. Chapter 115. So chapter 115, again, is a Massachusetts only program. And it is for indigent, veter uh, indigent veterans and their spouses. 
um, my office has 28 active, active cases, and with the Chapter 115 monies we pay out to these individuals, 75% of the money reimbursed comes right back to Foxborough. In 2021, we distributed $195,752.58. In 2020, it was only $173.658. So that's a big amount. Cost of prescriptions went up. Medicare will reimburse that. Fuel, co-payments, everything. So even though we have less cases, we distributed a lot more money. But 75% of the $195,000 is coming back to Foxborough. 2021 year in view. I had a pretty busy year, actually. Um, 1,000 phone calls and email inquiries. I did hire a new admin assistant, Lauren Burrell. We donated and distributed 19 Vietnam Memorial pins and books to Vietnam, celebrating the 50th um, anniversary of the war. Massachusetts has this really amazing book called The Time to Honor, and a lot of Vietnam veterans didn't even know, so every time a, veter a Vietnam veteran came to my office, I'm like, hey, did you get your book? And they were just, most of them cried, because <laughs> it was just amazing, it brought them right back to the war. Fond memories, but also not so fond. A field trip to the Her American Heritage Museum. So that was supposed to happen in 2020. Nobody went anywhere in 2020, so we rescheduled, and it was pretty amazing. If you've never been, I highly recommend it. 2,500 flags distributed for Memorial Day. Patriot Place Hometown Heroes Collaboration, they wanted um, some local veterans who are still serving, actually, to put on their Hometown Heroes at Patriot Place, so we collaborated with them. I was voted in as the Southeast Massachusetts Veteran Service Officer Association Vice President. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you very much. Um, CrossFit Torque here in Foxborough did a little food drive and um, essentials um, donation, and we were able to donate tons of food and some clothes and some toiletries that some veterans you know, really need. Um, and then this one was really special, collaboration with fire department, police department to find a family of a deceased veteran. A couple of months ago, um, a veteran just passed away on the sidewalk, no family, no children, no spouse, no nothing. And I got a phone call saying, hey, this is a veteran. And I'm like, oh gosh, okay, I'll do the paperwork. And like, no, you don't understand, you have to take control of the body. And I'm like, oh no, I don't, <laughs> like this is way beyond my job scope. So myself and the fire department, we entered the premises and we were actually able to find a long lost niece and she became next of kin so she was able to give him a proper burial so that was, that was actually kind of cool and then of course they do the 24-hour vigil for pow mia day right there on the common uh, the rolling thunder comes bunch it's just the, the mass the patriot riders the sharon patriot riders they are fantastic they hold vigil overnight with us it's, it's a really cool event uh craft group memorial day flag ceremony uh, ceremony last year they had a bed of flags representing um, veterans who we lost, and that was pretty interesting. 10 coats donated in collaboration with Coats for Vets. Thanksgiving turkey donation. So this year we gave away over 100 turkeys to veterans in Foxborough. On top of that, CBS Sporting calls me and says, hey, we have about 20 turkeys. Can you get rid of them? And I said, sure, absolutely. They lied. It wasn't 20. It was 70. It was 70 turkeys. And I did it, in, I did it on a Tuesday from about 9 o'clock in the morning to about 9 o'clock at night where I got rid of all the turkeys. So I was able to make 70 families pretty happy. Um, CapTel telephones, that's free of charge. It's for veterans who are hard of hearing. Um, you know, you guys know what caption telephone is. So we were able to give away three of those. And then our Veterans Day program with Paralympian Joel Hunt, which was a huge success. I was very proud of that. This is Lauren. She is a lifetime member of the Women's Purple Heart Auxiliary. She is an Army wife. Her husband actually was our Veterans Day speaker in 2019, Kevin Burrow. 28 years in Christmas service. She studied nutrition, health, and studies, and she's a former bodybuilder figure competition. So she's, she's actually pretty amazing. If you haven't met her, I recommend just knocking on my door and saying hi. The, Her field, the Heritage Museum field trip, um, it's, again, it's amazing. If you haven't gone, please do. It's just incredible. Veterans Day with the 215th Army Band, members of the Sage School, and up there is Paralympian Joel Hunt asking um, some questions and answering some questions with the Sage School kids. Coats for vets, so we all know Officer Jimmy Para. So what happened was they had police departments from all over Massachusetts. You lined up, they had the lights and sirens going, it was really cool. And then you had huge trucks, as you can see, just filled with um, Home Depot buckets. Inside those buckets was a coat, some snacks, gloves, some water, and some hand sanitizer, some masks, I believe. And it was just a really cool day, and we were able to give away uh, 10 buckets. 
Memorial Day, uh, me, Mr. Kraft, um, his son, and then the uh, general manager of Patriot Place. So that wreath that I'm laying there, it was funny because it was on the table and it was heavier than anticipated. So when Mr. Kraft and I went to, op went to go pick it up, we're like, oh my gosh, it was so heavy and we almost dropped it. And we're like, oh gosh, let's not drop the memorial wreath. <laughs> This was the fundraiser Dystopian Reflections. So fun fact, I belly dance, and this is our troupe, and they put on a show, Dystopian Reflections, and the proceeds came to Foxborough Veterans Services in the amount of $500. Wow. This is my veterans group. I hold every first and third Mondays at the Council on Aging. The woman here, um, they are from the company called H-Wave, it's an alternative to um, opioids for pain medication. It's essentially a TENS unit for the whole body, but it's incredible and so much so that my husband actually became a believer and he uses it. This is probably the most proud of in 2021. So I have a friend we used to work before we came here. Um, we used to work together in the homeless, veteran homeless world, and he deployed, he's in the National Guard in Michigan. So he goes to Michigan, he deploys, like, hey, I'm having some problems with some National Guardsmen working on their claim. I said, sure. So I ended up helping his whole squad. And as a thank you, they flew a flag in my honor over Afghanistan. And then, of course, Mr. Ralph Bennett. And that's it. Any questions? We know you do a lot, but there was something <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was, that was really... That's not like everything. It's just, you know, there's like, hey, you have like five minutes. I'm like, okay, yeah. five minutes, let's go. <laughs> that was, that was a, a yeah. pretty impressive year, and obviously we're always here to partner at any of those events you have. You know, we're, we always more than enjoy getting up and speaking and recognizing the veterans in our, our community. And Well, I certainly do appreciate the support, it's, absolutely. It's some yeah. amazing stuff that you have there and yeah. some unexpected things as well that we didn't know. Yeah, so. <laughs> surprise. Yeah. <laughs> You're always keeping us on our toes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> if no other no questions, questions. other yeah. than we want to discuss oh, the yes, uh, we, project. Oh, yes. Sorry to spring this on you. But there's an Eagle Scout project that we'd like you to talk about. We were going to do it during Selectman's update, but then we thought it made more sense during this part, if you don't mind yes. talking about that. So um, Sean, and his last name escapes me, so forgive me, um, called me a couple months ago and said, hey, I have an Eagle Scout project. I want to incorporate veteran services. I'm like, okay, what you got, kid? He's like, I want to do this thing. And I'm like, sure. So I signed off on the paperwork. Today it was unveiled, and it was a long, um, long standing resident of Foxborough who served in the Spanish-American War. So the flag is original to the Spanish-American War, as well as the certificate. There are some brass rounds that are there. Um, and there's a QR code, which I thought this was pretty interesting. So it's like the old and the new. If you walk up to the shadow box and you snap a picture, it'll actually bring you to Sean's own page. And it talks about the flag and the flag etiquette and some like some trivia facts and things about the Spanish-American War that it's a forgotten war. Like no one really remembers the Spanish-American War. So he found this resident, found the certificate, found the flag, wow. and now it's a permanent fixture in town hall. So that's, that's pretty amazing. He did an excellent job, was unveiled today. Um, just well done. Like I'd love to see kids involved in veteran stuff because veterans, you know, grandpa, everybody thinks, you know, veterans a grandpa, right? But that's not the demographics anymore. So kudos to Sean, they did an excellent job. That's Sean amazing. Kelly. Sean Kelly. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> yes. That's amazing. I'll check out the QR code. Yeah, it's pretty 20, cool. 2021 was like the, the, the rise of the QR code again. It came back. <laughs> well, right. We <laughs> couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. All right, wonderful. Check it out. Yep. Thank you All so right, much, Ellie. Thank you questions? so much. No. no? Yeah. Thank good. you. All right, okay, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for much. all you do, Ellie. Thank you. All right. Um, up next is our change of manager. Yeah. Okay, my agenda is from the last Thursday, okay? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> What was mine that I brought? Thank you. All right. So, do we have them here? Is Katie on? Or are we just they're, reading? They're uh, on Zoom. That's who's on Zoom. Okay. I got in too. I'm in now. Yeah. I got a new one. Okay, so for our next agenda item, which is just a change of manager for Splitsville, I understand that we have the new manager on the line. Yes, how are you? I'm Brian Peters. Is he here? Yeah. Okay, not he's yet. not here yet? I did uh, see someone on earlier. He's, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, he's on. I think just give him a second to... Yeah, how do I turn this off? 
Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you, Brian. Okay, how are you? Katie, can you hear me? Oh. Uh, we can hear someone really, really faintly. Yeah. One second. Katie, I think. Sounds like it might be Katie, but we can't. Just give us one second, Katie. Can you see who's on from yours? We can't hear you guys. Brian, can you just start the video on your end, too? Yeah, sure. You got a video? All right. We see Mr. Peterson, and I think we can hear you. Can you just give us a test? Hello? Hello. How are you? Okay. We can, we can hear you, and we can see you. Can you hear us and see us? I can. All right. Great. So I think this is kind of a housekeeping item, so I promise we'll be easy on you, but if you can... You know, just kind of give us an idea of what, what's going on, who you are, and a little bit about the, the change in yourself. Sure. So Kevin O'Brien, the former GM, just left. He went to work for uh, Jack Abbey, another company. Um, I've worked with Paul Holian, who is the owner over at Splitsville, for 15 years now. Um, and, yeah, I just went from being an assistant manager to getting the promote general manager. So you've been on site, you have, have you ever um, had a license in your name before or anything like that? I've never had a license in my name before, no. Okay. All right. Any questions on the application from the board? Steph, I know this is kind of your... Yeah, no. Everything looks good. And obviously being um, the um, assistant manager, usually the manager, like, yeah, you... no, no, <laughs> no worry about not having a license in his right. name because usually it's the manager. So if he was holding the assistant manager... Um, obviously, this is a progression for him, and I'm sure you're, since you've been with them for so long, you're, you know, know how everything, how everything works, and no, I, I, I think it, it's, it's, it is kind of just paperwork. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of a paperwork. Yeah. Uh, on a, on a, and um, Katie, any, any questions, comments? I don't think that there's any concerns from your end, but just checking in. Nope, nothing from me, and um, he has been in touch with Tom Atabellino from Fox Cares as well. They've already connected. Okay. All right, great. So um, I don't have any further questions. If no one else on the board does, I think we're ready for a motion. Motion to approve a change of manager for SV Patriot Place LLC doing business as Splitsville from Kevin O'Brien to Brian Peterson. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right, great. Any questions from you, Mr. Peterson? Nope, none at all. Thank all you right. very much for your time. All right, thank you very much. Good luck. Congratulations yeah. on the... Thank you very much. You got it. I appreciate it. All right. Um, so now we've kind of got one of the more meaty sections of our agenda, and that's the budget. So we have thank two you. sub items to talk about here. Um, finance is going to give us a presentation on the fiscal year 23 budget. And then we're going to have a discussion about the Government Finance Officers Association Award and Financial Trend Monitoring System. So we'll go through the presentation. And then I'll let Seth probably lead the second item since sure. you, you uh, had asked to have this on the agenda and seemed pretty versed in it. So, okay, so Marie and George? Yeah, uh, Marie and George are going to join us. I'll actually make the presentation okay. on the budget itself. Okay. And if you guys don't just mind each sitting in front of one of the microphones wherever you end up, just make sure one's in front of you, please. waiting for it to come up on the screen. All right, wonderful. So if you guys can just tell everyone at home who you are before we get started, if you don't mind. I'm George Sammy, the uh, finance director. Uh, Maria Almodova, the assistant finance director. We're just bringing the presentation up on the screen for everyone right. at home and in the audience. Here we go. Bless you. Okay. All right. So, good evening, everyone, and and, um, and thank you for joining us tonight for the presentation of the 20, fiscal 2023 budget. This officially uh, starts the, the budget season. The, the unofficial start actually began back in um, back in November when we had our, our first conversation amongst the the selectmen, the, the advisory committee, and the school committee, talking about what you know, the next year would look like and how we would lay out some of the guidelines, et cetera, for how the budget would be prepared. Um, the board did meet back in early December and then get, provided me with some guidelines and guidance on and how, we would, uh, how we would work on the budget. Now, the board will recall, we will recall that we talked about it, trying to get to a 2.5% 2 .7, 2 budget. 
Um, we tried really, really hard to get there. We didn't quite get there, but we're very close. We got, we got you know, Seth didn't think we could do it, but, <laughs> but you were right. So, so I'll give you, give you that credit. But, um, but actually, we got really close. We got the 2.73 uh, at this point in time. So I, I, and I do caution everybody that this is really early in the process because we still are trying to gather information about some of the elements of the budget, including insurances and um, state aid and... Um, you know, information from Southeastern Mass about what they're rejecting for their costs over the next year. So without further ado, I will get into uh, an overview of the budget itself. So um, if you take a look at, at, the, at the two diagrams, one, is, one looks at the revenues, the other one looks at the expense side of the budget. The proposed FY23 budget, uh, fund, uh, budget would fund a total of $79,835,712. Um, the breakdown in, in where the increases came in this year, you can see the total is about 2.73%. Um, the general government amount is up 6.14%, but we'll get into explanation as to why that is. And it's, it's actually because we moved some budgets into the general government, which we're, not, we're in other places before, and so it actually caused, it, it's really a, um, it's, it's more of a, a switch from one area to the other, so it doesn't, it's really not a, uh, a full 0.14% increase. Uh, public safety is up uh, less than 2%. Education at 2.6%, but that includes the, the Southeastern Mass School as well. Uh, they actually, the, the Foxborough <coughs> schools came in around 2.5%, which was, which was great to see. Uh, public works is uh, less than 1%. Human services is, uh, is, at, is at less than 2%, less than at 1.99%. Library came in at 2.54%. I'll talk about that a little bit later. And debt service is actually down this year, and that, which, which is interesting because it actually includes the borough school debt in, in that equation. It was down 4% uh, overall in terms of our expense in that line. Um, insurance and others is up 4.64%, but that includes several lines, and I'll explain that in, in a few minutes as well. Um, the water and sewer funds are, are actually down, are, are actually down this year by thirty-one thousand dollars overall. Um, so it's good to see that I think uh, the folks that in, in town will be glad to see that as well. And so let's go to the next one. On the on the summary of, of the increases, the general government side of the budget is showing a larger increase than normal. But we we, we actually moved some some funds uh, into that line which we had from other, other departments. For instance, we took all the fuel usage and now contained it into one centralized uh, budget, budget line which is now on the general government side. The funds needed for the town manager search were included in this budget. Uh, we included about $15,000 for that cost. That's actually listed under the selectman's budget line uh, as, it, as it should be because uh, you, you the group that will be in charge of that process. Uh, people GIS costs uh, for several departments was included. Uh, so that, that jumped that cost on, on the GIS side and, and, uh, and technology side of things. Land use department reorganization, which moved planning, conservation, zoning, and this is most important, the, the moved the inspections department, which was actually in public safety, into general government as well. So that's really equates for, uh, accounts for some of the biggest amount of the increase that was in that budget overall. Overall, a 6.14% increase. On the public safety side, uh, there increases to, in, to fire is the full impact of the removal of the SAFER grant in FY, FY22. So we are, are funding the full amount of that, that grant this year, which paid for the full-time uh, salaries of three employees. These salaries will, will now be paid for by the ambulance receipts. The increase to police is uh, directly connected to the funding for the educational incentive uh, voted to the fall in fall of 2021 town meeting and removal of the civil service overall increase is 1.97%. So not bad overall, and when you think of it from that, that perspective, education is up two and a half percent in Foxborough. The Southeastern Mass, uh, Southeastern Southeast Regional Assessment, is currently in, due to increase at 7.5 percent. Though we don't know that actual number at this point in time, that's only an estimate based upon what we what we thought uh, was the increase from last, last year. year. Uh, the overall is up 2.6 percent. Uh, public Works is less than one percent. No major increases. New capital outlay requests. Uh, identified in the capital side of the budget, which we'll talk about at another meeting. Overall budget increase is less than 1%. Uh, human services, and that's actually, I want to talk a little bit about that because we're looking to actually reorganize 
along with land use to create the two, two new departments, Human Services, which will now include Council on Aging, Veteran Services, Human Services, and Recreation. Um, there'll be, there's no major increases included in the Human Services Department. The overall increase is up one is up two percent for that for all three departments combined. Um, on the land use side, um, that increase overall was was down uh, was was actually up just just slightly, but that included again all three departments of planning, conservation, zoning, and uh, in, and building inspection and economic development all into one budget now. So um, so we were looking to to streamline the the, the organization a little bit. Um, these were, for the most part, the, the smaller departments of veterans and recreation uh, were, were smaller departments that had small, relatively small budgets for the, for the, for in the scheme of things. Same thing with conservation um, and zoning and, uh, and even planning, for that matter, in, inspections combined. It's still not a huge budget in overall, but it's, it's, it makes better sense to have one department responsible for all those individuals as opposed to multiple departments and division heads. <coughs> So uh, that's my proposal for, the, for this to be included in this, in this budget cycle. Uh, libraries is increased, increased about 2.54%. And you know, we started off, and I actually uh, made this statement that I would not look to uh, uh, increase any positions whatsoever. Um, I didn't do that, but the, but the library did. And the library trustees are a separately elected body, so they have the right to, to push an article forward, to uh, a proposal forward. So, which they, which they did. However, they, they did so in a way which originally they had proposed a budget which was significantly higher than the one they gave me. Uh, so now it's down to two point, uh, the overall increase is down to 2.54%. That They in, did request, uh, and this was considered one of their, their biggest priorities, was a new part-time young adult librarian, which was something that uh, they had actually asked for two years ago, and uh, which I had funded before COVID had actually uh, had wiped that out. So. This is actually back from the two year from two years previous. Um, they actually reduced their budget in, in other areas that are to make this work. So they clearly made this a priority in, the, in their overall present, presentation. This will be up to the board and to the and to the, and to the, um, the board of selectmen as well as the um, um, Ed, huh? advisory committee to determine whether or not that that, that position will survive that process. Um, clearly, it was their priority, so I, I, I wanted to respect that effort in that in that regard. The debt services I talked about is, is down overall uh, by 4%. Um, and then insurance and others, the pension assessment is increasing by 7.28% per the, the, the Norfolk County retirement system. Uh, the group insurances are, are estimated to come in around 2.75. We think that that number might be a little bit light. Um, but we're we're looking, looking to try and nail those numbers down along with the, the uh, property and liability coverages as well. Uh, an increase to the salary reserve budget is needed to fund all of the collective bargaining agreements, which are up this year. So, um, so we, we needed to increase uh, that number as well. Overall, that line item, insurance and other, is up 4.64%. <clears throat> this is just a, a chart indicating where the overall bu uh, budget history has gone since, since, uh, since back in 2020. Um, you can see that... Um, it obviously, the, the, the largest increase, largest amount of the budget overall is school of, is education. Uh, they represent about 51 percent of the overall budget right now, um, and then so the, and the other remaining costs are on are on the town side. Though, though it's also important to note that, that health insurance and insurances, things of that nature, are all the costs that are, that apply to everyone in the town, regardless of of where the budgets are. Going over to the, uh, to the FY23 general fund uh, expense budget summary, you can see that the that the the budget the the preliminary budget is uh, is, is is going to be funded through a tax levy of 58 million 120 thousand. That's an increase of 2.1 million dollars uh, over the uh, over the previous year, or a total increase of 3.81 percent. And the reason that is is because there's new growth built into that number. Is that you take the two and a half percent increase plus the plus the new growth. Number, which is about nine hundred and fifteen thousand dollars, as I recall, uh, and that increases that number to three point eight one percent. Local receipts uh, due to increase uh, by another million dollars uh, to ten million nine forty one nine eighty one. However, and I'll, I'll show it to you in a later later slide that that is actually still <laughs> lower than the, what the number was in two thousand nineteen prior to COVID. So we're still conservative in that estimate, though we do think our numbers are starting to creep back in. And um, as and based upon our current 
project current receipts collected in the town, we are we are significantly ahead of, of uh, what we estimated from last year, and so we do think that number will come in in the in fiscal year 2023. Uh, we do expect a full return to concerts and shows and uh, entertainment venues up at uh, up at Patriot Place. Along with that, increases in hotel motel and, and meals tax, et cetera, will actually help help that effort as well. Uh, and the other areas of, of, of the budget, uh, other receipts, we'll, we'll, we'll look for a, a decrease of about $250,000. Um, overall, on the, on, the, on the revenue total, we're, we're looking at a 3.71% increase in, in revenues uh, uh, town-wide. On the, on, the rev, on the expense side, uh, the, government, uh, the town government side makes up 2.77%. Education is 2.6%. Uh, and the shared expenses, debt, service, and insurance, pensions, et cetera, make up 3%. Uh, other assessments, snow, ice overlay, uh, is, is another, an OPEB, is another 22.46%. So it's important to note in this budget that we include, include OPEB in the, in the budget again this year. Uh, we made a commitment to doing that uh, when we talked about that earlier in the year. And also, and at this point, what we're looking to do is trying to fund, to find a way to fund the, the final payment, which will bring us up to par, and then put us back on the cycle that we were on prior to prior to COVID hitting hitting the town. Um, so the 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 overall uh, preliminary uh, net uh, amount is uh, we still have 181 dollars overall when we when we when we do the final calculation of where the budget is at this point in time. What are we going to do with it, Bill? What's that? What are we going to do with it? I don't know. It, it's a, don't spend it all at once, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, so th this is just a breakdown of the levy, the the uh, the, the, the previous levy. Uh, you take the previous levy, increase it by two and a half percent. You have the two hundred, the nine hundred fifteen thousand new growth, and you end up with the, with the nine fifty six million one thirty eight. You take you add the excluded debt, which is one point nine million, uh, which is, by the way is down from the previous year. Um, so about about one point two, about one hundred twenty thousand dollars. And um, which is a good sign because it means that some of the excluded debt is rolling off now and starting to see that it's just it's just strictly the the base base um, increases in the uh, in the in the de debt service. Is the detail behind that bill somewhere? I not in this slide, not in this presentation, but we can get that to you. We, need, we can look at that. All right. Thank you. And then um, so overall, the 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 total amount of revenue available for the budget on the on the levy side is fifty eight million one hundred twenty thousand seven eighty five. Uh, in, the, in terms of state aid, our state aid history indicates that we are actually going to keep uh, looking to keep our state aid uh, net state aid uh, somewhere uh, around the same as it was this year. We have not increased that number, uh, though it is actually, if you take a look at the FY22 budget number, that's actually lower than the FY21 number by about a hundred thousand um, dollars. So we are about eighty thousand dollars actually. So um, and reason the reason that is is because for the most part. The impact has come from the charter school. Uh, we're, we're actually, uh, if you take a look at the net increase over the years, the, the amount of increase that we actually receive gets absorbed by the charter school assessments just about every year. So we, we don't count on any additional really state aid uh, for building our budget for that reason. Um, if the, 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 the one thing we do hope is that we don't go any lower than what we've actually anticipated for overall state aid. So we hope, hopefully we'll, we'll come in at the same number we had from the last, from the previous year. Bill, and Doc? you know, uh, bringing up that point uh, with the charter school, I remember a couple of years ago, we tried to mm -hmm. get together with some other communities that were having this uh, similar issue and, and put forth a um, proposal to uh, the governor on, you know, the inadequacy of, of us having a charter school. Did that go anywhere? Well, it actually did. Believe it or not, there there was there was a charter there was a education reform bill that was put forward, um, but it happened right at the time when when COVID hit. So a lot of the revenues all the, that was supposed to support that effort went came off the table. So I don't know if that's going to come into play again this year, uh, our fiscal 23, because I do hope that um, that you know the governor's you know last budget will be will remember what you know what was promised to try and assist cities and towns who have a pretty big burden for our charter school assessments. So I, we're hoping that's the case. Uh, it's a conversation I'll have again with, with uh, state representative and state senator to see if they, they can try and help us with that. There is revenue available now at the state level that the revenues have been better than they've anticipated. 
plus they have the federal aid as well, so maybe they will provide some assistance and some, some relief in, in those lines, hopefully in the next, next fiscal year. Uh, I'm due to have another uh, meeting with, uh, with Representative Barrows to talk about uh, upcoming budget cycles and see if, in fact, we can get some relief on that point. Thank you. As I recall, though, it was the expense calculation that was kind of funky, right? Like it, it threw was. in, it fa yeah. factored in fixed costs and all kinds right. of stuff that, so is that part of that conversation? It is, it is. And it's, it's interesting that if you were, if the town were to, say the town of Foxborough were to, in fact, pass an override because they needed it for education purposes for local schools, that would still go to the charter school as well. So, so because we, we get assessed based upon what it costs us to educate a child here in Foxborough. Yeah. So that's that, the way that works is that we would, they would be the benefactor of, of an effort that we would have to make in order to, uh, in order to keep our budget going, but at the same time they would get the benefit of that. All right, All right so uh, let's move on to the next one, which is uh, uh, an indication of our, our look at our local receipts and a history of that. Um, it, so the motor vehicle excise is the biggest number that we, uh, is the biggest number on the, on the local receipt side. We don't see actual collections of that typically until February, March. Uh, the actual uh, assessment comes out in February and then is paid in March. Um, we do have incremental amounts throughout the year, uh, but right now uh, we anticipate that number to, to stay relatively flat and it's still below the 2019 level. So even though I know there is some concern about the fact that we haven't sold, there hasn't been a lot of new cars sold, um, this, we, do, we do anticipate that might be an impact, not for next year, but the year after. So um, hotel, motel, excise tax, we're starting to see that number really tick up again. In fact, we had to actually have a conversation with the DOR about that because we anticipate a, a big increase in that number. And we're already seeing that reflected in, in our receipts for this fiscal year. So we think we're, we're, relative, we're going to be relative, cl relatively close. You'll see that that's still about $400,000 less than what we collected in 2009, again, pre-COVID. Um, if you take a look, the really, the, the telltale sign is what we collected in, in 19 versus what we're projecting for 2023 because we hope to be back to normal by then. Um, you can see that, uh, that we're overall, we're in, a, we're in a pretty good position, uh, but we're still about... It's still about about seven hundred thousand dollars lower in in our in our um, estimates of, of pre COVID uh, pre COVID uh, revenues. Um, it's interesting to note that the actual number in FY twenty nineteen was actually about a ten year average of what it was in ten in in, in collected in ten in twenty nineteen was about was exactly right right around eleven point seven million was the ten year average. So we're still below that average, uh, even at our estimates for FY23. Um, so we're still re maintaining a relatively conservative <coughs> position at this point in time. Uh, available in the available fund side, we, we are continuing to appropriate nine hundred million, nine hundred thousand dollars of free cash. I think uh, uh, Seth, you had a question about how we're u utilizing this free cash. This is the primary use right now. We will take a look and see if there's any other uses beyond that. For free cash because we will um, because we do have the the ARPA money now which has been freed up in terms of the regulations so we have good news to report on that front so we, we uh, were patient and we did we been, uh, and that patience paid off so um, but the, that and the reason why that number is included is because that's where we're, we're helping to pay for the debt service for the for the new school and for, and, and we also did that through overlay surplus as well. So we, both those numbers combined are helping to pay the debt service of, of both the town hall and the, and the, uh, and the, and the, and the borough school. Uh, prior to that, we would not be using those uh, typically uh, under those conditions, but we're hoping, still hopeful that we will be weaning ourselves off of both of those over time because we think that the budget will, or the, or the, uh, the, the revenue, rev, debt service will drop as well as the rev, the, uh, the, we, we also think that the revenues will start to increase on the development side mm -hmm. if, if, in fact, Route 1 continues to develop as, as is planned. Um, so if we take a look at the Ambulance Reserve Fund, we, we, we're keeping that number at, this, at the constant 1.6 million. We've not gone up on that number either. Recreation Revolving is still relatively low, though we do anticipate now that that number could actually climb. Uh, 
But isn't oh. that's appropriated, not actual? That's right. So that's we know right. that's lower, right? For recreation. Right. We we have to do an indirect costs okay. at, right. at some point, and we calculate okay. it. It's probably going to be maybe ten grand okay. higher than. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we have to appropriate that still. Not not huge, but right. Okay. It's not a big number. And then, um, and I, that really is for the, it for the for the in terms of available funds beyond that. Uh, we had a few, uh, you know, one-offs along the way. Uh, the big one ba being back in the health insurance tr uh, fund closeout of four hundred sixty thousand dollars back in twenty twenty-one. Uh, Seth, you had so a Bill, the overlay or George, the overlay surplus. There is that. A, are we are we overestimating um, the amount needed to to fund this? Or why why were we at zero and now we're using three quarters of a to a million bucks each year? Um, how where's that money coming from? One of, one of the things that that happened, which I still will take my hat off to you folks, is when you did the uh, Bar the you use it the Barrel School or Barrel, Barrel School Party. <clears throat> when you guys did that, in most cases a town will do what they call a, a debt exclusion override. Mm -hmm which gives you the money for the payments for the next, you know, until the thing runs out, okay, until you're done paying on it. You folks, and when I say not you, but I mean the town in, in general, chose to do it within the debt li li limit. We didn't take an, a debt exclusion override. Now, in comes the payments, which is about 1.1 million, okay, during the, uh, the principal and interest. In comes the payments? What do you mean? You, you, well, you have to make payments, okay? So that's out. Well, out, okay. But I mean, in other I'll words, go, they, they came into the, the budget, yeah, okay? Right, okay, you pay right. out, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> you have these, this now, you have to pay $1.1 $1 million on an annual basis until, you know, it is kind of smooth for the next 20 years until you paid it off, sure. okay? Where does the money come from? There wasn't really much choice unless you were going to cut the budget by 1.1 million, mm -hmm. or you're supplementing it with the the um, the um, overlay surplus in some of the um, free cash. Free cash. The overlay surplus every year we're putting. We it's been this way for a while. It's about 1.1 million is what we've been raising anyway. Raising, so it's it's a revenue. It's a On revenue. one side, it's a revenue or. When you say it, it's you're actually taking 1.1 million off the top out of play. Overlay is it an allowance? Uh, it's an allowance for abatements and exemptions. Right. And the best way I can describe it is this. Okay, if you were in a business, okay, and you're saying I sold 20 million dollars worth of TVs. Yeah. The chances are somebody ain't going to pay. You're going to collect 18. Uh, so, okay. So overlay surplus recognizes the fact that even though we put out this much and we're charging this much, somebody's going to come back and say, my house isn't worth that, and they'll get an abatement. Somebody else might come back and just not pay it. Yep. Okay. So what's happening is, is if you put out, I'm just making it up, $10 million or $20 million worth of, of debt, uh, of, of um, taxes. Yep. We're taking 1.1 million off the top and saying we ain't spending that. That's an allowance for in case not nobody it. pays, yep. right? Or, or somebody doesn't pay. Okay. Yep. So what that does is it gets taken out of play, mm -hmm. and then what happens is is you cannot release that money unless you've already collected up to. So I'm making this up to to, to make the point. We've got 10 million dollars out there. I've held back. One million. I cannot release one mil a, 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 a bit of that last million until I've already collected like nine million dollars yeah. of what was out there. So it's a it's sort of a governor against bad debt. So you don't go out and spend more money than you actually took in. So so this overlay surplus means that we have an allowance that we have set aside. Take, take some back. We take it back. Right. right. So then once you get to that point during the year, you notice how it went down to 792. Like it was what first year it was a million, and then it went to 792. And what well, we're guessing 775. We couldn't, by the time we did it last year, we hadn't collected enough to go above 792. 
to release 792 into the budget. So we're taking back a million and a half. Yes. So the allowances, the over, the we're the allowances at one and a half million, and then we expect to take half of it back. Yeah, one million one hundred, and then you're taking around seven hundred back after you've actually collected that money. Okay. Does that make sense? Fairly. Sometimes when I hear myself talking, I'm Fairly. saying, Jesus, I wouldn't have understood that. <laughs> yeah, I no, I mean, I think you explained it as well as can be. So I, okay. it just helps make, I mean, I, this, All right. I wasn't setting you up by any means. No, 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 no. I, I mean, if, as long as you understand it, yeah. and, and you, you get understand. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 All yeah. right. Thank you. Because it's, it's, it's not the easiest thing to explain. It, it right. Really yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a right. challenge. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. All right, so uh, moving on to the indirect costs. Uh, now, this is something that we, uh, we do every year. Uh, water indirects, uh, uh, the preliminary water indirects are a million ninety thousand. What about 90, with you, Bill, on the screen? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm using it on my own I screen, but not I, 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 on my screen. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, yeah, the water, the water indirects are about a million ninety thousand, uh, same as, as uh, the FY22 budget, and the same thing. Since those budgets, neither one of those budgets actually went up, we're probably looking, we're looking at the same number. And to um, your point earlier when you were talking about the, um, the um, recreation, this will probably go up, I'm going to say 40000 or so. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, because all the overall costs of us, our operation goes, still goes up, they, they, they'll be charged. A, a right now we just went flat because we don't so, know what it is yet. All right. So... Um, it just sort of def defines it a little bit better through the uh, revenues and expense side of things on, on the chart. So, all right. Um, same thing with the sewer. Um, not a lot. Not a lot to talk about there this year. This year. Uh, again, overall, the, the expense budget is down on this water and sewer fund, uh, down 0.35 percent overall. So the next step, so the advisory committee budget will, will review, their me, uh, review their meeting schedule uh, and begin uh, on Wednesday, January 26th. Uh, we've given them, you know, the, 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 at least the, the, the digital version of the budget. Uh, we'll continue the planning and forecasting efforts throughout the year. This is the first go through of the budget and just a reminder to everybody that th this is now January 18th and, and, the, and, the, and the town meeting is in four months. From now, so we'll be looking at less than four months. So we've got a lot of work to do in between then and now, and a lot of hearings to go through, and a lot of discussion. But um, this, you know, again, marks the third sub three percent budget in uh, three years. Which is, if you think, look at the history of, of budgets in the town, this is actually quite extraordinary when you look at it from that perspective. Do we have uh, the schedule for Adcom yet? We, uh, I just worked on that today with Paul Ivanoskis, the chairman. Okay. And so I'll be, I'll be sharing that with you by tomorrow. Okay. Or even if it just goes up on their page. Sure. Just so everyone watching at home, yep. too, has a place to look. Yeah, he wants to actually review it with his okay. committee first, and so okay. I just wanted to confirm that So the, that the January 26th meeting is more of a housekeeping meeting? There's no Actually, they, it, they do have their first hearings. I think they're looking at, um, at DPW and uh, there was one other one. It'll be posted on there. I know. Um, it's going to be um, DPW on the 26th, and then it will be schools on the 2nd schools on the of second, February. Yeah. But um, Katie. Ian, sorry, um, he wants to just review that with his team, and then he said he wouldn't get back to me until Monday. So right. we can then right. post the schedule then. As soon as that happens. Okay, yeah, because we still have, like, the liaisons from 19. The members are probably uh, – those look okay, right? Those are updated. Those look, those look good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but um, like the liaisons, if we can put up there, if we can put the schedule up there, you know, whatever they yep. they get, let's put out on the adcom page, not only for everyone at home, but yep. then like it's just a place for us to go and find yep. it all too. Okay. So they, they that'll be done by next Tuesday. They're gonna meet remotely. Yes. So, so does that so does that mean they're going to be televised? Yes. Okay. okay so they will be televised for the twenty sixth. Okay. Great. I didn't know if that meant then you could just zoom. Yeah. In. Since since the meetings can't be can't be uh, not going to be open, that right. the, the meetings have to be televised. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All, right. All of them. As far as I know, as far as I know, as far as that's that's. Or maybe they, until they, they make a decision that they feel comfortable. They want to go back into the room. room. They can, you know, yeah. at that yeah. point. Um, so I know we're not taking a vote, and there's a lot more to come. This is kind of the second budget discussion that we have. We gave the direction, and now we're here looking at what you guys came back with. But does anyone on the board have questions other than kind of what Seth ran through? Or Seth, anything else? Doc, staff, 
No, no I, I I just picked up my book today, so I haven't okay. really even. Uh, I'm sure I'll have. I said to George, sorry, I said, I said no questions tonight, but I'm sure I'll have. Well, that's what I didn't send these two in <laughs> advance, but I do have two questions that I literally thought of as we were sitting here. So, um, number one, probably for you guys, the search committee, um, the fifteen thousand dollars that we set aside. I know a lot of towns have gone through this recently. Mm -hmm. Have we benchmarked against what other towns have spent to make sure that we're that we're accurate in what we're setting aside for that? Yeah, I've, I've actually spoken to a couple of the consultants that actually okay. do the work, and they and they it's anywhere between ten and fifteen. Okay, so we're yeah. we're comfortable at the yeah. fifteen. That was yeah. the first one, and then the other thing, and, and maybe I'm just misunderstanding this, but with the fuel coming out of different departments' budgets, they almost get like a freebie that their budget goes down because the fuel comes out. How are we rationalizing that to really see where their budget is? Because the fuel, you know, they, they almost get that pass with that coming out, but it comes in somewhere else. So are we look are we looking at their budget to make sure Well every every one of the every one of the, the major departments that had a police fire and DPW were all sub sub two and a half percent. They were all, all around two, if less than two. I, I think what you what you'll find is is like Marie went went through in like all right, take any one of the things where we moved things into yep. a different spot, okay. then took that same amounts from the prior year and did it so you're seeing the actual... Okay, so it's not kind of falsifying Right, like, like one year it was this, okay. and then suddenly it's way the hell down. Yeah. No, because she put the, you know, the, she moved the stuff okay. in there so it would all be for, the same yeah. right. So although okay. we see it on that alignment, right. it's normalized in the average right. that we see. Right. Okay, perfect. And a, a step further is, um, so we get, we receive monthly reports from DPW showing each department's um, fuel usage. So obviously if we see anything, not that anyone would be misusing it, um, there's controls in place to flag that. And, um, but we will be keeping a close eye on that because if we do see that any departments are spiking and our budget will run short, we will certainly charge that overage to that department. Um, and it looks like with those departments collapsing, we still have the same visibility that we used to as far as kind of the individual. So I'm, I'm happy with that. That was just kind of more of an observation than a question. Mm -hmm. um, anything else before we move on to the sub bullet within the budget? No, no I'm good. Okay. All right, so Seth, I'll let you, uh, not to put you on the spot, but lead, lead that, that piece of what you're thinking. Yeah, sure, Leah, thank you. Um, and so uh, this is just introducing, right? So I don't expect that we're gonna go super deep on this, but. This is reintroducing a topic that I've spoken um, to in years past, even two years ago. So, and it stems from uh, a Massachusetts um, state, uh, like finance committee slash um, town employee or finance committee meeting from a couple of years ago. Um, and Bill's friend, uh, John Coderre, Coder, I believe yeah, his name yeah. is. John Coderre. Um, from Northboro um, gave a presentation that uh, really impressed me and, and realized um, what you could do with, um, with data and information. And um, so long story short, um, what's listed here is Government uh, Finance Officers, Asso uh, Officers Association Award, which is given to um, uh, cities and towns that meet certain set of criteria for their budget um, presentation. presentation and proposal. And the criteria are based around um, how the data is structured, how it's shared, um, it's, you know, things like its readability, its understandability, um, and what it's able to do along with the, the second part here, the financial trend monitoring system, is show information in a way that people are, it engages people because it helps show where the town's been, it helps show where they are, and it helps show where they're going. And there's a, a I just looked through the Northboro um, most recent budget book just to kind of get a sense um, and it wasn't necessarily just to compare Foxborough to Northborough, but I just wanted to understand um, more about what what um, the program is about and what it can deliver. Um, and if I, I was speaking with Marie, there's certain aspects of it, and we're moving towards something like this. But what I think it does and what it could do, and I feel pretty strongly about, is it could help engage um, the residents of the town of Foxborough, the constituents, because understanding is knowledge and it's power and it helps people make more informed decisions. 
So when we talked earlier about um, free cash and the sources and uses of free cash, I still struggle to understand where the money comes from and how it's used. Um, we talked about overlay surplus. You did a good job explaining that, George. I'm a, I, I was a finance professional, maybe not a very good one for a long time, but most of the people on, the, on this committee and people in town are gonna really struggle with that. So a, a way to show both you know, the sources and uses of free cash overlay surplus. Um, another thing that, that caught my attention was just that, that headcount question. Um, and one of the things that uh, is included in the program of the, uh, the financial trend monitoring uh, system is showing headcount trends by department. And it can normalize for things like people moving around, but it shows the trends and it can show basically any types of questions that people in town have, it can give information around that. So just, and this is my last thing. So Stephanie, a couple of years ago and up till now, we, we talked about increases in compensation. So some, some folks got 2%, some got 4%. And it was really hard to, to drive home what the answer was there. This type of program and this type of approach could help people understand what costs are, what the increases are, how they compare to prior, um, how they fit in with the size of the budget, how they fit in with um, the resources that are, you know, th that we're driving again with these expenses. So it's all these things, and it's it is a lot of work, and it is um, it would take time, and you can't take this and do it all at once. And, and the caveat, another caveat is. I'm not doing this program service by any means of this spiel right now. Like mm -hmm. if we had John come in mm -hmm. from Northboro and set us down and, and show us the power of this thing, like it made me feel kind of like, oh man, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. What am I, you know? <laughs> so it just, it, it was very powerful. Um, and so I just want to, I just wanted to introduce it again um, as, as a topic and something to think about and something to have a conversation about. Um, and so I'll, I'll pause and. So, go ahead. And you guys heard of the program? Yes. You have, yes. but you guys all obviously have too. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, um, I actually, and John has said repeatedly that he'd be come, that he'd be glad to come down and explain it to people if necessary. So, um, Marie is somewhat familiar with it because she came from a community that had won the award several times. So she's very familiar with uh, with the budgeting award. Uh, the analysis piece. Um, John himself was a financial, um, had a financial background. You know, every town manager has a different background, if sure. you will. But, and John had that background. He was he was more the budget guy involved in. in um, he was up in um, Chelmsford before I think he came before he came mm -hmm. to uh, to Northboro, and then um, so this was his thing. I mean, he really he spent a lot of time on this, and he developed his staff around that effort to do that. Mm -hmm. We're not quite there yet. I mean, we we do think we're getting closer. To doing that, but I think um, we, it, I, I, don't want, I, I can't put anything more on Marie's shoulders right now. She's got a lot going on, but there, it would require some additional uh, staff uh, staff time and, and, and skill sets that to require to, to actually have the, the ability to do that. But we are moving in that direction, and, and I want to move in that direction. It's been my goal. Hopefully, I didn't think I'd be able to do it before I left, but certainly to set the town up in that direction so we'd win the award in, in the coming years, and also have the analysis as well. So I think we have, if you look at this document, there's more analysis in this document than there's ever been, I think. Uh, and there's a lot more to do, obviously, but there's still, we're heading in the right direction. And, and, uh, and that, I, I'll, I can certainly turn it over to, to Marie to talk further about that because she's done a lot with that effort up to this point. And I, I'm really, I think this, this is a great document. I just don't want to take away from that. But, but certainly, um, I know this, there's other things we can do as well. Yeah, um, so basically what I've, what I set out to do since I arrived here was to work towards that, knowing that there wasn't anything here that was already existing, so I knew I had to essentially start from scratch, use some of what I brought over from Concord, but then sort of make it my own. So um, if you look at just last year's budget book and compare it to the new one, um, you'll see that I added a couple more sections, you know, accomplishments, um, goals. Those are all things that you see in that's all part of the criteria that GFOA mm -hmm. um, sends out. I know there's the next piece is um, key performance indicators, um, which you could incorporate as part of the budget book. Mm -hmm. There's also the separate, the financial trend monitoring system, sort of a separate thing, but as part of the budget book, you can 
add things. So like, for example, for finance, we could put on there the number of invoices we've paid, the number of tax bills we've sent out, the number of uh, W-2s, 1099s, police fire, how many f calls you responded to, how many fires, you know, things like that. A lot of data to show basically, you know, this department has a $9 million budget, this is why, why they need that money. Um, these are some of the things that they do. Um, what I am looking into is um, there is a program through the state. Uh, it's called the, I believe it's a community compact uh, program. And what they do is the state, it's a state program, so basically the town can partner with the state, assuming they have funding available. And what they do is they, you apply, um, there's a set of grants that you could apply for. One of them is for a financial trend monitoring system. So basically the town can partner with the state and if they have money set aside, I reached out to them the other day and um, they're not quite ready with their FY23 budget yet, but there are grants out there um, that we could potentially you know, apply for that could help us. So essentially we would bring in a consultant that could potentially you know, help us you know, come up with something like that. Um, so, I mean, we are looking into that. Um, like I said, with the budget book, I will keep adding more and more data into it. Um, and, I mean, the goal is to get that award, you know. Is, is the, the financial trend monitor, monitoring system is, is, I believe, is part of the criteria for um, being receiving the award, right? I don't know if, if it's that one. I mean, the GFOA developed the the financial trend monitoring system yeah. um but as far as the budget you could incorporate it as part of your budget book i know recently they had the gfoa had some more changes um but basically um i think of um i can't think of when the last time they had some changes i want to say it was maybe two years ago yep. um but there are consultants out there that you know you could bring them in like i said there are grant opportunities out there you know we could bring someone in to help with you know any of these things um because it's not something that's going to happen in the next couple of years i don't think but um like i said I've, i'm working towards that and um hopefully one day i mean that is one of my personal goals is to see these things come to life and um with the uh, financial trend monitoring system the biggest work is actually setting it up so getting your historical yeah. data you know your you go back 10 years and then from that point, from then on, it's just Maintenance. putting in the, yeah. So, so maybe um, that could be something every year too that we could have as part of this meeting is an update on where we are. Cause it, it sounds like this is more of like a three to five year goal. I would say so yeah. And you know, just like we heard, you know, just like we heard what we added this year, how we're working towards it, what we're hoping to add maybe next year to keep ourselves you know, honest yeah. as well. In that direction. So yeah. I, I would suggest it's a three to five year goal. If, okay. if uh, Marie's not doing it off the side of her desk, if, if there's resources put against it and be, if the town mm -hmm. decides that right. it's interest in this program, it's a seven to 10 to never goal if she's doing it off the side right. of her desk for right. the next right. however long and trying to like piece it together. It's a, it's a commitment and there is resources. Yep. Um, We're I think already the, a member of the compact, so that's, yeah, we are. We are. We're a member of the class, so we're eligible for grants through that program right, right now. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, you'd have once you apply, you you can only get grants once. Mm -hmm. um, that's why you have to be. You have to know for sure. There's a list of things that you could get grants for. I know. Just the other day, I looked because um, I am taking a class, and they were talking about um, these resources. There's also the Collins Center over at UMass Boston. They do a lot of work. Um, they could help you with the budget book, forecasting, um, even the, I asked them too if they do work with the, the KPIs and they said that they do. So there are resources out there. Obviously, I would like to see us go for a grant or something, um, you know, to hire an outside help that yeah. can, you know, so that, you know, because we you really need someone who's who can truly dedicate 100% of their time to do this and we just don't have that luxury right now. Absolutely. But it is something that I would like to see with, you know, like Leah mentioned, within the next three to five years. Yeah. I think so I, all I'm suggesting is if we sort of set it and forget it and say, it, all right, Murray, do your best, and, and George is doing his best to, to try to 
it's it's not really going to materialize. I mean, there's there's work behind a financial trend monitoring system. If you saw the, so if we saw the results, if we saw a town that's already doing this and and could actually see it in real life and put it up on a screen and be like, oh wow, there's a lot here. This could answer all the questions that we've had in the past around two percent, four percent, free cash, overlay everything. Um, so I'm I'm a proponent of this mm -hmm. program, and I. I I would work with Marie and George to, to the extent that it's you know the Whatever appropriate, yeah. Yeah. and if we can bring John sure. to, to to show us and sort of give us what this actually looks like because he is a, a budget, he's a yeah, he's budget guru. He, yeah. he's, he's one of the best in the state. Guru, so, yeah, I was yeah, going to say yeah. budget wonky guy, but like yeah, guru is budget better. Guru, yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> one of the best in the state. I, because he's not like a, like, yeah, so that would be. No, he teaches a lot of the other managers in the state about budgets. Oh, he's, I, he's, he's the master. I yeah. believe it 100%. Because I, good. you know, I was like, wow, I didn't know what I didn't yeah. walk in and out of. I was like, I learned a ton. And there's just, I think, a lot of value in the resources, yes, but I think the, the value that we get out of it. It's a lot um, of work up front. And then once we do that, and it's, it's, then it's you're, really good. Then you maintain, and there's, yeah. there's the maintenance is not just. Um, basic, you know, running the reports again. That I, I think it's a it's a flexible tool, so that as situations change in the town, we can understand more about. We might have new questions right. that come up. You know, who knows what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. um, and so it's flexible, so that it allows us to change and, and help us um, understand where we're going, where we've been. Well, it sounds like everyone's on the same page that we want to get there. It's just making sure we make it a priority and. Mm -hmm. You know, as the department shifts, maybe in the next couple of years, keeping in mind how we staff and how we move forward. Right. With That's that, a good, it's a good time to have this conversation. Yeah. It really is. Um, because too, like you know, so Bill, ha you know, we, for me, it, you know, and how I started on AdCom and trying to learn the budget book was, I would just go down the far right column. I'm looking for big increases or decreases because it tells you something's happening. And I'll tell you one thing that for me would be nice to know is, um, you know, not, not for this year. I just mean even in the future, it's like, so there's a, you know, uh, a line item here and then it's kind of like, so I don't know. So how many professional librarians is that salary covering? Is it one? Is it two? Is it four? You, you know what I mean? It just gives us like professional librarian in numbers. And, um, not to pick on library, but I just went there when Bill, when Bill told us that was that was a big one. So I went back to look. You know, I see two big. You know, I see a a twenty point nine three percent increase, which I'm guessing is probably another salary. That's why something right. goes up that high. But then I see on another line, I see an eight point eight one increase, which is a big increase too. So for me, it's kind of like, well, what's going on there? You know. So, so there, I I totally agree, Stephanie. I'm just questioning why you say not for this year. Like this year is. Oh, Oh, you oh, should well, know. You should be able to know that. Oh, and that's oh, what I well, want to know yeah. it too. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I, I'm sure I could. I could ask the, a department yeah. head or whatever. My my thought when I was saying not for this year was meaning like, is Marie yeah. going to have yeah. time to do a whole new budget book over? That's not what I, when, you know. But, but 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 we could absolutely ask those questions. It's headcount, yeah. Stephanie. Right. So it's just yeah. show me the headcount and the trend, even if it's yeah. last year and this year, because then you're going to see. Exactly. The changes are, are, are period we, over period. Are we adding positions? Yes. Not, like, you know, I have even, you know. It sounds like this year maybe some decrease, like just to yeah. know and see that, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, and I'll be very interested to, I mean, we, we gave Bill a direction, no new positions. Now, with that being said, um, I'll be interested when, when, when uh, ADCOM, whoever the liaison is for the library, you know, gives their presentation, of course, I'd be much willing to listen to but we gave a direction, so I want to really know why. And I'm not picking on library, but that's the one you said. Right, you know, exactly. They, yeah. they added it, you know. Yeah. And, and they, they, they course, worked hard to get to that point, and it, exactly. made it, it was a priority in their budget. So I, I, exactly. I, I have and, to respect that. And I'm looking that. at, like, you know, other things they really went, went down on. So, right. so mm -hmm. probably. But with that being said, I also feel like we said no new position. So if you didn't add the position, even though they found a way to cut everything else, that cut should come, it shouldn't come just because you want to add a position. If you can make those cuts, you can make those cuts. So, and I'm not picking on library. I, I'm just, you know, when I haven't heard what, the you know, story, yeah. yeah, well, yeah, once we, but that's why someone goes and meets with them and comes back and gives the whole schmeal. One other thing I'm wondering if at some point, I try to find it, and I know I've seen it before on the town website, but I, I tried a couple of times and I couldn't find it. 
so just um so is the library director are they part of the personal wage scale I know it's because some people are. They, well, he has a he has a contract actually. He has a okay. contract. Okay. No, that's. But so here we here a quite. He, he doesn't have a contract. He was uh, in some places. He's a non-union director. Part. He's actually yeah. non-union. Okay. In, oh, I thought he had a contract. No, in, so in some towns the library director does have a contract. Um, what's what is unique about that one is he's um, oh, th that position is is on the non-union pay scale, but what's unique is that the. Uh, the elected board, the the trustees get involved in that one, so it's just a teeny bit different a little, than all the rest of yeah, different than that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Like yeah. So because for me, so they stayed level, but usually I would think that, and, and not necessarily because somebody may come in to replace someone who has just as many years experience, but somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wonder. I'm like, so the salary that was given to the outgoing director is being given to the incoming director. It, 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 you wouldn't well, know that, you wouldn't know that until after the, 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 the process is complete. Oh, 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 yeah. okay, you're just budgeting yeah. that. Right. Right. You're budgeting right. that It could number. come right. or, Oh, know. okay. Yeah, we, okay. Won't, we won't know the number until they actually hire okay. the next person. Okay, so that, that's, why, that's why I'm just like, so I'm looking, I'm saying, okay, so we're budgeting the same number mm -hmm. when, you know, actually I would think that based on the scale, there's a lower number for incoming for certain positions. And that can be adjusted yeah. once you, at least once yeah. you know it is, we used to, we used to think that I take that for granted, but you can't do that anymore. Yeah, yeah. Because given the, the limited number of candidates you have, sometimes you have to pay similar or just a little but, bit but less. But if we have a scale, shouldn't we? Shouldn't that be the number we're using? I mean, why would you, we have? It's a scale? true. It's true. But if if you have a, if you have a limited number of candidates for a position, and you have a qualified candidate, you have to position yourself to the point where you can actually lure that person here. And if they, and if it may be that the, that the number that they want is similar to the one number that the previous person had. Okay. Well, uh, to me, it would be like, why have the scale then? But, well, I, I understand what you're saying, but I mean, there's got to be somebody. Well, in a, in a year like what Bill yeah. said, if you had an overabundance of yeah. people and you had ten or twelve, you would have it. The scale would be all the, yeah. you know, then the world. you could maybe right. do something. But sometimes if yeah. you if you if you so limit it. So moving along, you know, just so we're not okay. in too many of the specifics, kind of looking forward. For us and for people at home, I think ClearGov is another good reminder. Mm -hmm. It's right on the finance homepage. Mm -hmm. um, you can go in and you can look at a lot of this. You can even put in your property tax amount and see how that's appropriated. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. So that's on the finance homepage. Um, are we at a place where we can add the FY23 budget book? There is a spot for it. Are we there that we can add it? Can we get it out there? And we're not ready yet. Yeah, I have. Okay. I could just we could just upload the okay. PDF. Yeah, so let's let's upload the budget, but so that will be available. Just like we're looking at this right here for everyone at home on the budget book page, right. um, on finance. With the caveat that obviously right, with the caveat it's going to change. Right. Haven't happened. Yeah. This is this is the starting point. Yeah. And then you know, getting back to what Seth mentioned, it sounds like everyone's on board. I think you need to let us know how we can support you, what the roadblocks are, you know, and how we can get it to just not being something off the side of your desk. You know, to really, to really move it forward. And honestly, until until the rest of you see it, yeah, it's it's hard to imagine what this actually is. So it's I'm talking to it. Marie's done it. Um, it's it's hard to see what it what it really the power of it. Yeah, I can share with you guys. I have um, John Coder. He actually taught a class that I took. I want to say a couple of years ago. Um, and more, most recently, he sent me. Um, he sent me their most recent. Um, they basically do a separate report that goes over. It. There's a long list of trends that you could pick from. Um, I mean, there's different ones. There's ones I look at: your population, your tax revenues, your expenses, the age of your population. There's so many different ones. Um, but I mean, like I said, you know, once you kind of pick the ones that you want to use going forward, and it's just a matter of setting it up, and then. Yeah, it'll be less work it. after so, that. More but I, yeah, I could, I could send you guys um, okay. that report. That should kind of send you in the direction of what your budget should be, Seth, based on those factors, or? Um, it just informs um, the various components of the budget, um, how they relate to the drivers of expense and revenue. So it, it really, it's, it's tailor, you can tailor it to your town to answer those specific questions and types of things that, that we want to know um, so kind of digests and interprets a lot of yeah the and, it, into and, and it shows so for example you're going to see headcount 
across all the departments trended over time and that's just a standard um, submission and, and component of the of the document and the process it, it sounds like headcounts maybe one we want to work for next year you know if, if it's yeah. possible to put it like it sounds like that one comes up yeah, a lot it's, it's i would like to do a table at some point if you actually look at the the org charts just below all of them there's an a full-time equivalent okay. count so if you wanted to just compare last year to this year you could see the differences okay. there um I just don't have an actual chart with all the departments listed out, but each individual department has its own org chart with their FTE number. Okay. Um, you know what we used to have, Marie, too, is um, where we are for this current year. Where are at, like when we would get our budget book, mm -hmm. the actual, um, with what was budget, where we were at this oh, we, point. We do have that. I, I, oh, that I was put over them there. right out okay. the door, yeah. Okay. okay. So, so it's, I put out there, um, a history of the operating budgets, a history of the free cash, the certifications and the uses, and then um, I ran a report as of today for both revenues and expenses. Perfect. Um, Perfect. So it's all right and, and there. with that being said, too, the, I, I did learn um, why, why it was nice that somebody would go meet with department heads, too, because we would be sitting in a meeting and we would look and I would say, okay, well, they're budgeting $50,000. But right now they've only spent seven thousand. So why are we budgeting again for next year? And then it just happened to be fire. Chief Hatfield said, um, "What happens is though we spend the bulk of that in the in spring the because yeah. because that's yeah. when we order hoses and uh -huh. or you know I you know so that one, yeah. so it would give you you know so even sometimes the actuals don't yeah. don't line up because you, you say well why are we budgeting fifty thousand when when we're halfway through the year and spend seven right you know so it's kind of nice that they then can ex understand because they don't spend it's not like um your mortgage payment your car payment you know right. they're, it's not they're, either. They're, it yeah. changes all yeah. all through the year when they're spending their their uh, money uh, just maybe to come full circle um maybe sometime in the summer after the elections uh May or June, maybe have the gentleman come and yeah, make a definitely. presentation with the Something new that might be most the, impactful. the new board, yeah. and you know we got five people on and perfect, ready to go. That and, sounds good. And, and hear that proposal. That's a good idea, Mark. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So just exactly. to kind of wrap things up, too, great work on the budget book. I think last yeah. year it was pretty amazing to see where we were versus where we are. I I personally find it easier to interpret every year. So thank you um, for all your work on this budget book. It's it's a lot of work and good job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I would second that too. I and I talked a lot about what the agenda is. I was, you know, strong, but this is clearly a lot of work and it's it's a great document. It's powerful and I appreciate all the effort that went into to putting this together. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Did over two two hundred pages. Well, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So with that, I think we're ready to to move on. Great. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you all. All right, great. Thank you. Thanks, uh, George and Marie. And uh, thanks all right. to all the department heads. I'm sure heads we'll be too. seeing you around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks to all the department heads, too, for, uh, yes, for the work they put you. into this and as well, because they were very cooperative and helpful in the process as yeah. well. Yeah. As educated as everyone can be going into town meeting, we'll make everything smoother. So That's right. everyone knows how to reach everyone if they have any questions. So. Great. Okay. Thank all you. Right, great. Thanks a lot. Thank you guys. Thanks. All right. So just as we wrapped up. Um, special town meeting we're getting into annual town meeting and and articles that are coming up and there was a lot of discussion about you know articles going on the warrant um one had come up about marijuana um, both retail and cultivating so retail you know selling storefront and cultivating being growing um someone had come to us which i think some of the gentlemen are here in the audience kind of asking if foxborough had an appetite to revisit that again since about 2017 and during that discussion I had mentioned you know I think culturally Foxborough is a community that wants to know what's going to happen they want to know where it's what's going to look like is more than like vague general ideas especially when it comes to this so we had talked about you know maybe a citizen's petition being the best route to go for them and then you know come to find out um, per their attorney it was maybe not the best way to go because they could do the citizen's petition and then someone could come out someone could come in and and take that license essentially from them. So it, it brings up the idea, you know, of the planning board, I'm sorry, of the Board of Selectmen supporting a marijuana article to go on the warrant. It's not like we'd take a vote tonight and it moves forward, but do we want to put this on the warrant for it to go down the process, since it is zoning, to go to planning board, public hearings, town meeting, 
and everything again like it did in 2017. For me personally, um, I think in 2017, it was kind of a scary and new thing. I know I remember sitting in town meeting and voting against it. Um, here we are now five years later. You know, it's all around us in Mansfield, Sharon, even a community like Sharon, I know, you know, probably one of the most conservative communities around here mm -hmm. have made the switch and it hasn't, it hasn't, at least from me, obs you know, looking from another town, it hasn't had a big impact besides possibly financially helping them. Could you be, just be specific on made the switch to, to what? To allow. Allow. Marijuana. Like sale. The sale. Sa sales. Sales. Well, they'd be separate, sale or cultivation. So I yep. think the town would have to say, do they want to allow one, either, both, neither? Yep, so sales means a dispensary? Yeah, retail, yep. Yep, okay. Cultivation, well, I just learned this all too, means actually growing it. So you could cultivate it and not retail it, or you could retail and not cultivate, or you could do both. Yep. Um, Got it. Thank you. So with this coming to us, and it was, it was right around special town meeting. I think it might have been the week after. So there was plenty of time leading up to it. Um, I am open to it going back onto the warrant um, to be looked at again through all the long process that it goes through. But I wanted to have a discussion with the board to see if that's something that you guys would be in favor of placing on the warrant. So I, I agree, I agree with you to like the, it, it, things have changed and it's not, um, because it's, there's so many, like, you know, I'm, I'm driving to my parents in Stoughton and I drive by two of them that are like, like 150 yards apart from each other. Um, what I've heard, I don't know a ton about it, but what I've heard is the communities that are hosting really benefit financially. Would, would you know that, Bill? I, I, that's what I've heard. I don't know if it's yeah, they, true or they not. They actually do. Yeah, and now, I think we'd have to have, a, like, that would be a yeah. discussion we'd have to have, yeah. and we'd have to, you know, what does zoning look like? Where is it appropriate? I don't, yeah. I don't think anyone thinks, like, uptown is appropriate, but is maybe, you know, industrial or Route 1. or So there's a lot of conversations that would kind of come in education. Yeah. And I think the, the people that did come forward that were... Um, they were interested i mean they were going to clean up that right on route one that little gas station corner they were it, it was just a mess there they were going to come in clean it up and there wasn't an appetite for it at that at that time i mean everybody was just like no but the the thing is it's um if you can go to these other communities right around the corner from us and they're benefiting i think i i, I for me it'd be worth just looking into again Anyhow. Yeah, um, I think two things historically. One, the place on North Street, Route 1, that was a close vote. That was a three to two vote uh, not to have it. There was a lot of discussion. There was a lot of uh, press in the paper on, yeah. on both sides. And it was that was going to be the um, uh, medical dispensary. You know, you needed a um, medical marijuana card to, uh, to, to get that. And then the other thing, um, when we voted it down at town meeting, I think it was so early in the process of legalizing marijuana that I think the tact we took as a board at that time was we don't know where it's going, we don't know what the regulations and the state was going to be, and I think we voted it down, and I always forget the legal term, um, with prejudice, without prejudice, meaning um, I think it was without prejudice. Well, it was that, just a, that we could bring it back again, and the only reason we're voting it down was because the, it, there was too much ambiguity at that time. So I think this is a good time uh, to bring it up, uh, bring it back to the town, um, have a good, strong discussion, some good history, find out what some of the other communities are doing. And it is a and, zoning article, so it will require two thirds. Am I correct or incorrect on that? I, uh, I, I think believe, that's. I think that's true. Yeah. I believe it would. So it would. It would be us putting it on, but it would really be planning board, from what I understand, that would kind of shepherd a lot of the public hearings and, and the education that we could, we could join. And I imagine that Mr. Weinfeld will have conversations with his board to see how, how, how they are feeling. I think both boards would have to you know, be in favor of at least putting it forward to have the discussions to move, move on. I think there'd be a vote later in the process after everyone's educated. Seth? Understood. Okay. <laughs> so any, any objections with us putting a placeholder to, to revisit this again on the warrant? Not for me. No? Okay. Okay. So I think that there's a lot more to come, 
but I think that this board is is supporting putting it on the warrant to talk about it more. Correct. Mr. Dudley, do you want do you mind just coming up and just let everyone know who you are? Sure. Although I think most people know. <laughs> they may or may not, but I'm Bill <laughs> Dudley, 36 North Grove Street. So I have a question for all of you. Are you going to talk about the human cost and when you do your analysis as to whether this should be in Foxborough? I think we'll explore every, every avenue. Because I've, I've taken part in burying a number of kids from drug overdoses in this town. Drug deaths are skyrocketing all across the country. And it's obvious the connection with marijuana as a gateway drug, including legally sold, legally, not so much morally, sold, including in Foxborough. There's a human cost to this. So before we glibly look at the money, I have a whole history to give you here at an appropriate time. So I'm wondering if that will be part of your conversation. Yes, and you know, I, Bill, correct me if I'm wrong, but since this is a planning one, there'd be a public hearing. Um, you know, it is also meetings with the Board of Selectmen Planning Board, but there would actually be a public hearing where the public could come in. You're making a decision tonight, though. We're making a decision not to support the article, just to put it on the warrant. So it will go on the warrant. So you could make a decision not to. We could make a decision not to put on the warrant, yes. Yep. So I, I would make the decision not to. I, I didn't think that that was necessarily any vote or anything, but if maybe it was three to one or maybe it was two to two or I don't know, but I, I in favor of what Mr. Dudley's okay. speaking about, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't know, Bill, I'm looking at you if you need a formal vote for us now or if that's when the warrant article comes out. What is the timing of this? Well, well like? right now there is no article. So, right. uh, so it, un, until, someone, until someone presents something, it's really, I mean, all you did was have a conversation tonight about whether or not you, you entertain such an article to come forward and whether, whether it would be worth a person to present one, uh, a person's effort to present one. So um, and if somebody wants to present one, that would be the time to say no. But if you're not interested at all, that's also important to let people know that too. So it sounds like the applicant is not looking to put forward a citizen's petition any longer, and this would is looking to have it be a board of selectmen sponsored article, from what I understand. I I do believe that there is and it is a, there is there is technical there's a technical concern here that if 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 it's just put out there by an individual. Uh, then they could go, go through all the all the effort to put it to put it out there, and then have the the uh, the license actually taken by someone else. Because if they make if they offer a better offer than someone else does to uh, to, to to get the license, then that, that could be it could be taken right from underneath them if they go through all the effort. Mm -hmm. So that's the issue, and whether or not it makes sense for the I mean, there's there's also the other the other avenue that to determine whether or not the town itself is comfortable with the concept of doing it. And the board may recall this, but you actually did a citizens, uh, a non-binding referendum on this issue that came up uh, pr just prior to the election, but just prior to the town meeting action on this uh, back in 2017. And uh, maybe that's a way to you know, get this discussion going again is to see if and how the community feels about this issue at this point. Okay, so it, it would go on as like a ballot question. And it would go on as a ballot question. If it passes then, as the ballot question, then it moves and forward. And if and if it was if it was supported, obviously, it would there wouldn't be enough time between the election and, and the town meeting to, to actually have it uh, unless they, they were submitted at the same time. Um, then the board could then the, then the town could act on it at that point. But the alternative actually would be to see what the town says and then present something maybe in the fall. Mm -hmm. There's another option. I mean, I'm in favor. I'm not, not saying I'm in favor of voting for it. We'll all sit at town meeting and, and we'll all vote for it as a town. But I'm in favor of putting it on the, warrant, on the warrant to hear more and have those discussions and have those public hearings. And it is one of these issues that there's people on either side of it strongly <clears throat> and to hear both sides of those. I am as well. I, and, I, and I think um, everything you just said, Mr. Dudley, will, will come up. Completely. You, you know, for, for whether it's people who don't. I personally, I don't use marijuana. 
Um, but I know lots of people that do, and, and to your point, I would say that um, what you're hearing now too is that with all the uh, fentanyl, now it's like it's, they're finding it in everything. They're pressing pills, they're lacing marijuana with it, everything. I, the, I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna argue with anybody, whether it's the gateway to further drug use or everything. All that stuff has been, you know, has, has been laid out. But I will say that the people who are going to use marijuana are gonna get it somewhere. And if it's, if it's a safe way for them to get it compared to buying it on the street, um, like I said, it's not gonna affect me personally one way or the other. It's not and, safe. You know, and so, but I think all of that will come up mm -hmm. in, in discussions. I don't think, I'm not, I don't wanna speak for the whole board. I don't think we're, we're sitting here tonight and saying, yay, let's, we're moving forward with this. I think it's just to be able to have to a conversation more. about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so I don't want you to feel that we're yeah. we're making some we're making some decision tonight. I, other than letting it at least come forward for discussion. To hear more. Yeah. Learn more. So do you need a vote from us? When what does this look like, Bill? Where where do we go from here? So if if the board wants wants to entertain this, then we would put together a an article for a town meeting. Okay. Uh, we would put we'd put a placeholder in and develop the language accordingly. I think the I think the, the I think the preliminary indication was the last time this was visited was that the location for this would be up on Route One. Mm -hmm. um, I think so that was very strong. Yeah, yeah I think that, that was, was, that was pretty strong. Like that yeah. was, I don't know where so we. Well, I don't know. I don't know of any other location in town where that would be appropriate given the circumstances. But um, but I do believe that was the location. So an article would have to be that an area to be uh, you have to identify an area where it would be where it would be sold. And I, and I think that there are uh, lots, of, lots of concerns, of course, on both sides of this issue, and it's one that uh, it gets vetted quite, quite often. And, and, and if you take a look at the facilities that are being built, they're, they're actually quite um, state-of-the-art, you know, in terms of what they, they look like. So they're not areas that, that are really detrimental to the community from at least from a, from a it's, not, it's not like an unsavory type of, of a location. But it, it is obviously a, a debatable issue, and some people feel very strongly about this. So it's obviously one that's going to raise some concerns. Okay, it'll be a long night at town meeting. Yeah, if it does end yeah. up there, lots of lots of discussion both yeah. ways. Um, yeah, and I think also, didn't we have an article that you can't? Why do I feel like maybe a couple of years ago on Adcom, remember the big dip? talk about it do we have an article that you can't even have a smoke shop downtown uptown i'm sorry have out in uptown <laughs> uptown happenings um uptown or like vape and stuff didn't we have an article uh, that, do, just vaping say products. saying that uh, yeah that, 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 yeah, that it, it couldn't yeah. like could not be zone like the zoning mm -hmm. uptown was none of that so i think that would be huge in this article too, it, where it's gonna be. And not. I think the planning board would also have to be on board. So although this yeah. would be a board of, of, of selectmen sponsored article, I think the planning board would have to be on board to move this forward as well. So I think that they, they should. So, so the discuss. starting point would be to take a look at the area where they were considering doing it in the past and then re, you know, reevaluate that article, determine if it makes appropriate sense to, uh, to, put, to move that forward for a further consideration by the board at your, at your, when you consider the warrant. Okay, so do you need a vote from us at this point or not? I, I would think you would, okay. yes. All right, so um, all those in favor of moving the, the marijuana, art, marijuana article forward, and I believe it would be two, from what I understand, one for retail and one for cultivation, because there may be an appetite for one and not the other. So all those in favor? All those against? Okay. All right, so I think that we will just at least open the door to have more discussions and move that forward. There'll be plenty of other, other times as well to dig into this more. I know I'm interested in hearing more as well. I spend a lot of time with people in rec who are struggling in recovery, trying to live. And I've known a lot of people who have died. So you understand I feel strongly about this. And there are some things the money isn't worth it. The state of the art isn't worth it. A human life is what matters. So thanks for letting me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dudley. I completely.
hear and understand everything you're saying and certainly look to, to hearing more on it. And if I, I could ask you, Bill, too, to take this to the two, I know Paige is out, but you know, whatever the right means is, maybe to get right. this to planning board for them to get an appetite, because I think that both boards would need to have an appetite as a letter accordingly uh, then submit it to the uh, to the planning board for consider consideration okay all right great and just one more thing I want to add just so even anybody at home and just so mr. Dudley knows I know we talked about the money it's it for you know I'm only gonna speak for myself it's not a, it's not about the money you know I mean it, it is one factor but if someone can drive you know a mile out of town it, you know, it, you know the. I, 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 I know exactly where, where you're going, and I agree with you on those points. But I just didn't want anyone to think that this is money driving. No, us. it's a, it's a yeah. definitely a sensitive topic, and yeah. you know, people will feel will feel very strongly on both yeah. sides, and we just yeah, need to absolutely. you know make sure we have respectful conversations and hear each other out, and and learn more because I don't think anyone, you know, we're not taking a vote tonight. That'll be town meeting, and there's yeah. a lot lot to learn, and hear from each other. Um, so also with that, just talking about Warren articles, um, Katie, are you still on? She is, just give her a second. Okay, remind me, it was, do we want to have the non-solicitation article? Oh, and to change us to select board. And I said, as far as I understood, based on all the directions, we, all the discussions we had that night, to have a placeholder to move those forward, we could always pull either of those articles. But just so you know, other ones that we've talked about in the last six months that when Katie reached out to me, I had said, let's keep a placeholder and, and put, move those forward as well, since we discussed them in the past. Right, Katie, the, the door to door uh, and um, select board. Yes, you're right. And I think we were just waiting to get a cost to not that, again, not that it's just money or that it matters, but <laughs> I think that um, Bob was going to go and, and get some sort of idea. Are we hundreds, thousands for the change to the select board just to kind of have an idea as well? That, that would need to come as part of the presentations. I haven't spoken to Bob. Um, Bill, have you reached out to ask a possible I have not. Quote? I, I know, know that, that, he, that he, mentioned, he mentioned the last time he was here, he was going to look into that, but we have not. Okay, if not we can just circle back on that on that piece as well. What was it, the cost of what? To change all the <clears throat> manuals all the to documents. select board. Oh, yeah. Remember that? I think that was just an open to do that was in. Yeah, yeah. Well, aren't there, didn't we also discuss, aren't there bylaw changes? And yeah, he was kind of going to get us an appetite for what the whole change looked right. like. Right, yeah. bylaw and... Yeah. And okay. is it a software thing that it's like a find and replace, or, you know, what, can we do it as one motion? What, is it what does it look like? So I think we just need to, let's put the placeholder on and let's, let's keep it moving forward. And the other one was the issue of the, um, of the solicitation. Yeah, I mean, I, I would love to opt out of people coming to my door, but... <laughs> It seems like an easy enough one. Uh, town council already looked and found it in another town, and it seems like a, a quick and easy one we could put on there. Okay. Um, okay. I think that's it. Closing out those items. Anything else, article wise? Or okay. All right. So we're on to town manager's update. All right. Just a couple things to, to uh, bring to your attention. Um, one is the fact that we have good news on the federal aid, uh, federal opera front. Um, during the past week, the, uh, the federal government, uh, the Treasury, the U.S. Department of Treasury actually issued its final uh, rules on spending on, on ARPA. And the big change, uh, I'm going to take this off for a second. The, the big ch uh, concern that we had was that we were restricted in, in how we could spend the money uh, based upon the fact that we had done a calculation on lost revenue and it identified in, the, in that calculation that we had also taken in a $6 million grant, which was earmarked for the, uh, for the borough school. That, based on the previous regulations, would have offset our losses uh, for the entire year. So we uh, then set upon a, an effort to try and change that or to influence that language at the tre U.S. Treasury Department, which um, I have to say, uh, based on the efforts of Congressman Auchincloss and, and Senator, Senator, Mar Senator Markey, rather, uh, they were both very successful. Their staffs were very helpful in trying to get change done. And, uh, and the change that they did make uh, was actually made it very simple for us to use that, those funds now. And in fact, they provided what is effectively known as a, as a $10 million waiver uh, right up front in terms of the, the regulations. So that uh, even if you didn't meet, lose $10 million, you had, you could, if you lost up to $10 million, you would automatically be eligible to start using the money for almost any reason you, you needed to. So, so we have now uh, an ability to spend 
uh, up to $5.5 million of money from both the county as well as the direct federal aid to the town of Foxborough for, for, those, uh, for, that, uh, uh, for, for that use. So um, it's a pretty wide open area. We were actually trying to get a little more clarification on, on a couple of things, but generally speaking, um, I think now the, con now the conversation turns to, okay, what do we spend it on? And I think that's a conversation that we should have uh, collectively. I, we've identified a number of things. But most importantly, though, I think one of the biggest concerns we've, we've had is that we've not been able to spend a lot of money on, on capital needs over the past few years. Uh, and, and there are some projects that have lingered because of the fact we haven't had the funds to do those things because of, our, because of COVID. So I do think now is now the time for us to turn to those conversations and see what's the priorities. Um, so I, I would like to put together a, a conversation. I'll work with you, uh, Madam Chairman, mm -hmm. identifying a time what's best to do that, to have a conversation mm -hmm. with, with uh, stakeholders to see what's the best decision, how the, how the money should be spent. Okay. We'll, give you, we'll provide you some, some guidelines on that as well. Yes. So is this go, do we circle back to CIP on something like this? Well, we, we would, it, a lot of the things would come to CIP, but I do think that... Um, there are other, other areas we might want to look at as well, and I think ultimately we'll look at this as a, effectively a two-year funding source for CIP-type projects. And, you know, my, it, we'll put this on the agenda so we can all have our ideas, but I don't want this to just go into the operational budget. Like, I want to do some stuff yeah. that we wouldn't normally be able to do or fund with this ARPA money. Like, I don't want it to just, you know. No, no, totally well, I, agree. I, you know, our intention is projects or whatever it may be, I'd like Bill and the department heads to maybe come to us with some project play ideas um you know Paige I bet you has a has a her and I have been involved in a lot of discussions so I would like to make sure she has her you know ideas brought forward but I think that we have to have a, a high level direction discussion on this as a board maybe you know the next meeting on, on what where we'd like to see this go and then you know maybe get down to the next level after that well, I'm quite certain the list will be long. Right. <laughs> so, so, but we have so to the, start with that long yeah, Exactly. List, you know? So, and I, I think we just have to look at it and then say, okay, what, what makes the most sense? A goal, I, I think a, a short-term goal should be that we should try and limit the use of free cash over the next few years so we can, until we rebuild it to the point where we feel comfortable using it again. Or right. never use well, it again. Well, 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 I don't know if you'll ever get to that point, quite honestly. <laughs> but I, I, I really know because if it's possible to financially do that. But, um, but I do think, though, that at least limit the use over the next few years so that you can still get some, some of the bang for the buck, so to speak, with, with the money that's there and, and address that. And, and Maria and I talked about that along with George, and we talked about <coughs> the fact that we could potentially have a, a two-year capital plan uh, that, that is not funded with anything but ARPA money and, um, and not impact free cash as a result of that. Just for the so, sake of argument, Bill, if, if, yeah. if you had a free cash balance that trended at $3 million every single year into perpetuity, you're not using free cash at all. So you're, you're suggesting it is a um, sort of a fund, uh, an unres a reserved, unreserved fund or, you know, for when necessary? Well, I, I think the classic example of how you utilize free cash is what we just went through, all right? In other words, we needed, we, we took some hits on our local revenues and we were able to use free cash to balance those. Yeah, when needed. So when otherwise, needed. If, we're, yeah. if we're constantly recharging every single year and taking out every single year, that's where the disconnect is, For I'm sure, for most people. I don't know if anyone else on the board yeah. understands mm -hmm. free cash. I certainly don't. I understand it. I don't know how it's used or where it goes. I still can't tell you because we're using it and recharging it every single year, so it's this big wash of stuff in and out, and that's, what, that's where I get lost, and so that's... A conversation for another. It's day. A, that's a big, that's a bigger discussion. But I, but I do think, but but generally speaking, I, I think what the goal is to is to make sure that we're being prudent in how we use those funds uh, going forward, and that uh, we want to continue to to maintain a certain level to, to to keep a you know the town protected from these sort of these offset type of uh, events that we never never really anticipate. Agree. So, so we're already um, at the end of January. I don't know how that happened, that our next meeting is in February. <laughs> um, but I don't think that two weeks is probably enough time for you to come to us with that list. Maybe it is. You, you tell us. But I think in February we'd be looking well, to I, have I, the next level conversation. I, first of all, I don't think we can. The good news about this, this is not budget sensitive right. per se, other than the fact that we, if we are going to have a conversation about capital, uh, we should have the conversation. Uh, we need to have that by, by March. 
but yet the, the regulations, the new regulations, don't become effective until April first. So we, um, so and then, but that does not require a town meeting action to appropriate for uh, use of opera funds. Right. So that's the good news. So we do have a little bit of flexibility on that point. The question then becomes, okay, what things will go to town meeting, what things won't? Okay. And I think that's a conversation we have to have. Okay. So we'll look to you to, to when when you're ready to have that next level okay. discussion with us. Very but good. I think that. I think we're all sitting here saying, let me know if I'm misinterpreting, but that we're, we're looking to do something special with this, <coughs> not just, you know, put it into the operational budget. Absolutely. For sure. And then lastly, I, oh, I would just uh, would, would notify today that the uh, uh, law enforcement uh, uh, magazine, uh, offices.com, offices magazine rather, uh, designated uh, the new summer facility for one of their awards for design. Uh, so they, it was for 2021, 22 the design award, 2021 design award uh, for the new facility that they just built. So uh, congratulations to, the, to Castle Booz, who was the designer of that building, and uh, for, the, for the final result that they achieved. Did you have something, did you want to say something about having the list come to us with where they'd like to go to Arthur? Just a, just a quick thought on that. Um, so thinking about using ARPA for something maybe outside of what we would do without it, um, Foxborough's, I think, in a position where when we have a project that needs resources, a capital project, we tend to, we tend to fund that project. And I know in the last couple of years have been lean years, but I, 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 would, I don't know that there's anything that we're saying this ne has needed to been done for years and we haven't. So it feels like we take care of the most pressing capital needs and then there's things that are haven't made the cut because it's it's not as pressing or else we would have taken care of them so uh what i'm expecting from bill is maybe not as um uh earth shattering or or unique um i don't know that there's anything they're going to put in front of us that we're going to say oh we should have been funding that for years or it's just the next thing down the line that is yeah, maybe it, less pressing so see, it might and not and be and i'm in a lot of uptown meetings and there's a lot of like uptown stuff that uh -huh. I think that we need that's not going to probably be in the capital budget. Okay. But economic development wise, you know, whether it's, you know, par the parking lot behind Central or, yep. you know, seating to gather, like, yep. that's kind of where I'm thinking, like those gotcha. type of projects that I've heard come up okay. that would probably not be in capital, that let's do something that we wouldn't normally do. So it's in, 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 yeah, both. Yeah, yeah. yeah, in all likelihood, it's going to be a combination yeah. so of both. So because Bill I think... and his department has kind of bring us that list of everything yeah. they've heard. Yeah. Since this has come about. Yeah, because there are, there are some pressing things that we've been trying to do, we just haven't been able to find. Like, like it instance, never even made it to the table because, yeah, they, you know. Well, like one thing that we really do need to do is like take down the, the old uh, building at the... Uh, the laundry the, building? The laundry building. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's a pressing yes. thing. You know, we got to do that. And then there's other things such as, oh, you know, uh, maybe <laughs> looking at the parking lot is, is a project that we yeah. haven't, is really on anybody's radar yeah. screen. And, you know, and then maybe looking at, you know, design dollars for some of the, for like, for instance, the public works building. Exactly. Like, you know, something yeah, like that. Stuff that we, that we know is going to be coming up or, or even at the, uh, the, the community center or that type of thing, you know. What about that, sorry, to, what about the building that's on the old, the old hospital and it was considered for. That's the um, laundry building. That's the laundry building. No, it's like the, oh, the, the auditorium. Side, it's the like aud the auditorium. The auditorium, oh, yeah, the auditorium. Oh, I don't no, think could, could that be awesome, or is that just like would take I'll, that down, just, or what? Paige it's, is taking a couple people through. Um, there's people yeah, that have been interested, no one that's come back, but the, I don't. The, the, the problem is it's expensive to re renovate and expensive to take down. It's expensive to to uh, to, to just level it. So it, it's, it's, it's a challenge. It really yeah. is a challenge. Yeah, but it just sits and... I know. Remember when we used to start the old haunted house there back yeah. in the day? And, <laughs> <laughs> It's almost like I don't know if you ever remember the Worcester Memorial, the Worcester, the Worcester train station, the old in, in Central. I actually remember that last weekend. Oh. It's beautiful now. Yeah, it's beautiful now. They, but <laughs> but that sat vacant for years yeah. because it was too expensive to tear down and too expensive to renovate. Yeah. Finally, somebody they, they figured out a way to do it with federal dollars. Yeah. They they figured it out. So, but that's those are the kind of things that you know you have to look at it as being unique. I mean, it's only going to get worse, right? So at some point, yeah. it's going to cost more to do later than it does to do it now. Right. I'm just we're thinking out loud, but yeah. anyway, all right. Definitely, Pete, that's all one's on page radar, yeah. though. But I totally get your point yep. in terms of what you're talking about, yep. so that's helpful. Okay. Thank you for... And I totally skipped Mike. I am so sorry. No worries. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. Mike, Pete. <laughs> I was having a little snooze. Uh, so, so first I want to talk about uh, recruitments, and then I'll talk a little bit about um, COVID-19 stuff. So uh, under current recruitments, uh, we did hire a full-time van driver. Uh, Michael Pitts from Foxborough, he'll be starting 
with us on February 7th. He's, uh, he's a career driver and a Navy veteran. Uh, before I go further, I know that the board would like to see these ahead of time, and I'll do that moving forward to get that to you the week before. I didn't do that um, here, and I apologize. Um, we, um, that full-time van driver position became available um, when our full-time van driver over at the Council on Aging and Human Services applied for the part-time position uh, unexpectedly. That's something he wanted to do. So Gary McDonald, who's been with us for quite a while, uh, he'll be starting the same day, February 7th, as our, as our part-time. Again, an internal candidate um, who we didn't expect, but we're pleased uh, that, that this is, fits his lifestyle, uh, time of his life better, and he, he's an Army veteran. Um, the fire department administrator position that I've talked about for a while, um, we did fill that position. Um, the, the new person will be starting January 31st, and her name is Dawn uh, Dennis Kurt, and she has a, um, a career background in, in public health administration um, as, a, as an administrative assistant, um, and she's coming to us from the town of North Attleboro. She'll be starting, as I mentioned, on January 31st. Um, three other positions that we uh, have currently in process are the community caseworker over at the Council on Aging and Human Services, a water department uh, coordinator, a uh, position that opened up because we hired internally, moved someone up, and the library director um, position. And um, on the COVID-19 front, I just want to talk about a couple of, um, I guess, um, legislative uh, mandatory s sort of things. The first one is that the, uh, the federal OSHA emergency temporary standard, as most people know at this point, um, that was overruled by the Supreme Court. And the town had made a decision to, um, to engage our labor attorney in putting together a, a policy um, for that. And that conditional policy was shared with all the union presidents. And um, on the 13th of January, when we got word that the uh, that Supreme Court had overturned that ETS, um, I reached out to all the union presidents and told them that, as promised, uh, if the Supreme Court overturned it, that we would be abandoning that policy, which we have. Our, our hope and desire is that our employees um, who are over 91 percent, um, you know, vaccinated at this point, will continue to voluntarily get vaccinated, get the booster, uh, because I think we've done an extremely, um, you know, a good and thorough job of making those vaccines available on site to our employees to keep both our workforce and the, the public safe um, who we engage with. Um, and then the last uh, couple of things, masks. Um, you'll notice uh, that folks are wearing masks. There is not a state mask mandate. We don't have a town mask mandate, but just uh, you know, per the governor's order, we are highly encouraging them, uh, and people have been really good about wearing them in, in our public buildings. Um, and then the last thing is that um, you know, following CDC guidelines, when someone has a positive case, uh, we're following those guidelines strictly. And so if we have a, uh, an employee who is uh, quarantined um, and then it finishes the quarantine period and is asymptomatic and returns to work, then they are required um, by us per CDC guidelines to wear a mask for an additional five days. That's the only mandatory mask. But uh, we see folks regularly wearing masks and, um, and we think that's working really well. And that's all I have. And then uh, Christina, just tag on to yours. Christina posted how people can get their four free COVID tests on the town website as well. So that is a federal program for per address. You can go online, you can sign up for them. Pretty easy. I Where? did it today. Yeah. Where? Do we uh, she, she, COVID test.org and it's just on the town social media. I'll she put the link oh. right on the t social media. You can go to that. And, nice. Yeah. Thank nice you. little reminder. I clicked on it. Thank you, Christina. Um, sorry for skipping over you, Mike. I think no, I no think that's problem. it, and no I think we've taken. we've hit all my selectmen's update items throughout the night that I had. Does anyone else have anything old or new? So, so just a quick question, Mike. So, um, so we're not gonna we're not gonna go with a mandate. So, what? Just refresh me. So, what we're doing is, if you if you're a town employee, you choose not to be vaccinated. 
You have to wear a mask yeah, and you have to correct. test. Um, no, they do not no have test. to test, um, but that. they Let's but they must wear a mask. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So we we've uh, chosen to you know to let people make that choice if someone feels very strongly that they are against it for whatever reason they do not have to. And I, and I will say it's a, a very small percentage of our, our employees, and we are respecting that right. And obviously, we're still meeting in person. I know some towns are going remote, but everyone everyone's masked, and we encourage that for our, our boards and committees that you know choose to meet virtually, like AgCom we talked about earlier today, or those that are in person as well. Okay, anything else, Selectman's update? All right, I think we're ready to move. Oh, so, I have one thing. Yes, yes. Can, uh, I just want to share something. Uh, you know, I always like to bring that little feel-good thing. I just want to say that um, I spent a couple hours this afternoon with uh, the Queen of Foxborough, Miss Joni oh. Goodwin. Um, so um, she was in rehab for a little bit. She got home about a week ago, um, doing good. And um, one of her granddaughters said that she would love, you know, if someone wants to come to visit. So I gave, gave them a call. So I went over and spent a couple hours with her. And uh, I just want to mention if you're a friend of, of Joni's and, um, you know, she would probably love if anybody wanted to come over and spend an hour, just catch up or whatever. Um, you know, she's a, she's a special woman to this community and she's, she's given a lot of her time to, to our children driving buses and, and whatnot. And so I just wanted to throw that out there that she's, she's doing what was nice to, it was like, you know, she's, she's a woman that you can spend some time with and you leave and you know, you're just like, that was such, like, I was like, I had such a great time with her. <laughs> so anyhow, I just wanted to share that. If anyone knows her and wants to throw a little shout out to her, um, she'd probably appreciate that. Thank you. All right, so with that, we have seven action items tonight. A long list. Yep. Um, motion to approve a class two auto license for Boost Unleashed Incorporated with the restriction that no cars are allowed on premises and no auto body repair work is done at the address listed on the license. Second. Any further discussion? I, is this, I just don't remember seeing this one. Was this a late ad or did no, I just miss it? No, no, it actually has been in here and he's okay. just looking to buy, he's looking to get his license to buy and sell parts. Yep. And he understands that there's no. Um, he actually offered to come in, and I told him I didn't think we needed he needed to because it seems pretty cut and dry. Yep. Um, so it is conditioned in here that he cannot buy, sell any of that on his property. Where is it? It is on Windsor. From he just needs a license in order to go to the shows, yeah. be able to enter and uh, as a dealer. Oh, cool. Okay. And I'm saying Windsor because I know where he lives, um, but I'm <laughs> looking for the application <laughs> to confirm it. But it's that neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, um, so we had a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, the next two. I don't think I've seen these, but there was public hearings and all for them. Um, and then they land with us. Motion to approve the petition for joint pole relocation on Granite Street, uh, Foxborough, by Massachusetts Electric Company and Verizon New England Incorporated. Second. Under further discussion, Granite Street is one of our um, scenic roads, so I did ask Bill to just double check in. No concerns there with that being a scenic road. Um, so I think we're, we're all good. All those in favor? All right. All right. Motion to approve the petition for joint pole relocation on Glenwood Avenue, Foxborough, by Massachusetts Electric Company and Verizon New England Incorporated. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Motion to approve the petition for joint or identical pole location on Perry Drive, Foxborough, by Massachusetts Electric Company and Verizon New England Incorporated. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, motion to accept a $300 donation from Dr. Richard Moschella to the Recreation Department for Christmas lights on the common. Second. Under further discussion, I forgot to mention under the budget, but Bill did get the Christmas lights in there in the budget for next year. So that, that's in there. It's in the Recreation Department. It's in the Recreations budget. So we've at least got a starter, and then if we get more donations, great. So all those in favor? <clears throat> Aye. Motion to reappoint the six constables listed for a term to end January 31st, 2025. Second. <coughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve the December 21st, 2021 Board of Selectmen meeting minutes. Second. 
Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Good. Yeah, we're good to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everyone. Thank you. One signature. Mm -hmm. As always. <laughs> Not a cup of red for what you guys. Either. <laughs>